Our next speaker is Meredith Mescara, Chief Executive Officer of Girl Scouts of Greater New York. Meredith leads a 60-person team as they work to realize their vision, a New York City in which every girl feels empowered to lead in her community, her workplace, and the world. She's going to be speaking to us on the topic, Moving at the Speed of Girls. Well, thank you so much and good morning. My gosh, I'm so excited to be here. And I just want to give a kudos and a shout out to uh, Don, Kara, Jackie, and Michelle uh, for that, uh, for for the presentation before. Um, incredibly interesting. I know some of you are probably wondering what is, how is there a connection? What does this look like um, between Girl Scouts and, uh, and tech? And why am I here? Uh, and there's a couple of reasons why. Don, I think you mentioned an incredible point and a good question. What are we doing about the pipeline? Uh, and where are those careers that we do not even have, that don't even exist yet in this field? Uh, who Who's going to fill those? Um, and Teresa, uh, I, I did catch you as you said that the, the workforce is undermanned. And I would challenge that and say the workforce in this uh, in this sector is underwomaned. Um, for all of you who are on today, I would love for you in the chat or in the Q&A, if you were a Girl Scout, uh, you can raise your hand or, uh, or, or just say Girl Scouts. Uh, if you were not a Girl Scout, you can put in what your favorite cookie is. Uh, I am the proud CEO of Girl Scouts of Greater New York, where we currently serve about 25,000 girls in the five boroughs of New York City, uh, ages kindergarten, through uh, through 12th grade. For those of you who are familiar with Girl Scouts, I'm seeing all the Girl Scout stuff coming in, uh, familiar with it. We are a 110 year old organization uh, that has been successfully putting women in the workforce pipeline uh, through those 110 years, empowering young girls, introducing them to new careers, uh, and really uh, having to keep up literally with the speed of girls. And now, more relevant than ever, right? Um, especially in this topic. Uh, my job today, I think, is to inspire you. Uh, I know that there's a lot of talk about with cybersecurity and the, the, the challenges that come with technology. My job is to inspire you to know that we have a workforce pipeline ready. Um, although we are absolutely unrepresented in the STEM industry, 76% of women in STEM were Girl Scouts at one point in their life. 72% uh, of uh, women serving in Congress were Girl Scouts. All of the astronauts who were female were Girl Scouts and all of the secretaries of state who were women were Girl Scouts. So our, um, our career trajectory for girls has, uh, has exceeded uh, any other organization. And I will tell you right now, we are poised to help in this next um, in this next challenge, especially in in STEM, you know, and looking at these past three years, the impact of technology in just the day to day uh, day to day lives of young women um, is exceptionally exceptionally important. That I experienced it myself, not only as CEO uh, of the Girl Scouts organization, but also as a mother of five daughters who uh, all were working and uh, and learning from home and understanding that the technology uh, is not something that is out there. It is something that is internal and it is something that we are all users and our girls now need to be leaders in it, not just users. Um, we have proven ourselves as an organization, as I said, just relentlessly over these past uh, 110 years. But now, um, in these past five years, taking doubling down on technology and making sure that our girls are equipped uh, to 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 not just know what they are using, but again, equipping them to be the leaders, the programmers, uh, the entrepreneurs in the industry. One of our proudest programs uh, that we have here. Um, as the only 100% urban council in the country, we are also the, the most diverse council. So we serve the, the spectrum of diversity, socioeconomic, racial, religious, identity, et cetera. Uh, and we represent the diversity that is New York City. So what we need to do is make sure that all of all of this workforce, all of the openings in that will be coming up and all the opportunities for girls are equitably brought uh, 
to the to the table for every girl. Uh, our vision is to create a New York City in which every girl feels empowered. And when we say every, we really we really mean it. Uh, five years ago, we launched a program in partnership with the Department of Homeless Services of New York City, where we have inserted ourselves into the shelter system in New York serving more than 2,000 women and girls experiencing homelessness in New York City. Uh, this isn't just a one a one-time event. It isn't just a one-time thing. It started with a STEM program in the shelters, introducing young girls to STEM technology and financial literacy. It is a it is a year-round program. Uh, girls from Troop 6000 are in our uh, STEM programming. They are learning cybersecurity. They are doing our leadership institute, uh, and they are getting certified. Uh, as education opportunities for cybersecurity jobs uh, as they graduate from high school. We've been an integral part of this solution uh, to make that impact in communities that need it the most in order to ensure that there is diversity and equity in the STEM and technology industry uh, moving forward. We know how important that is for representation uh, to be there uh, and for that innovation to come from more diverse more diverse voices as we move forward. Uh, we are serving more girls in more powerful ways. That's been a, a, a North Star for us. And I mentioned our Leadership Institute, and I, I encourage you all to, to join me in learning more about some of the programs that we do here, because we would love to invite you to, to join us for some of these. Uh, it is a premier leadership program that's designed to create educational and professional pathways for 6th through 12th grade girls. And again, looking at the spaces where inequity gaps are. We know that more women have left the workforce in the past two, three years uh, during the COVID crisis, and this gap cannot be left open. So we must ensure that girls are served to po oh. to, and poised to confidently step into that workforce pipeline so that their ambitions are satisfied. Um, you all know there'll be more than 1 million jobs that will be created in the next 10 years in STEM. So it's imperative that those jobs are filled equitably with more than 2,000 girl, girls a year participating in our STEM programs, 2,000 girls, and this is during COVID, <laughs> um, participating in STEM programs. We know that we're the organization that will ensure readiness uh, for those career paths um, and readiness to be hired, readiness for education, and readiness to step into leadership roles. And this generation, uh, I always talk about moving at the speed of the girl. And I think pre-COVID, we were moving, we were moving at their speed, we accelerated, and now we have this generation that not only um, not only was born 100% into technology, but now had three years of their life. And three years for a 10-year-old is a lot more impactful than three years for a 49-year-old, right? So three years of their life was spent absolutely connected to technology, to see what works, what doesn't, to find solutions, to navigate around, and to actually vision themselves in technology in a much more immersive way. And this generation also demands accountability for what we do and say. Uh, we know that they are vocally challenging and courageously challenging authority and advocating for what they need through technology. Um, for those of you who are parents out there, I apologize. We know that this is phenomenal for society, but it is exceptionally challenging for us as parents. <laughs> um, but we really focus on what by girls and for girls, where are they? What do their voices need? How can we amplify them? What are the issues that are the most meaningful to them? And year over year, the interest and understanding that STEM focusing on technology and absolutely focusing on cybersecurity is one of the number one issues that girls are focusing on right now because they see that as a way for them to make an impact and to advocate for what they need. Uh, through an incredible grant through Craig Newmark uh, Philanthropies, we have been able to, for the past three years, serve those 2000 girls in cybersecurity. And I don't know about you, but there is nothing more inspiring than seeing girls at the age of five learn how technology works, to learn the, um, the, the process of technology and to put it in an applicable way for them in a tactile way for them to then be able to translate that into what is incredible 
to see is a hundred high school girls creating a cybersecurity attack on New York City and then dismantling that attack and working through all of the problems. This is what our girls are doing now. So I always joke when people say, well, Girl Scouts, it's so much fun and it's really cute. And I say, no, it is fierce. It is so different than what we used to see. Um, yes, we have cookies, we have camping, and we have crafts, but we have cybersecurity uh, training that, again, is preparing them for those real world world jobs and ready to step into uh, step into the workforce and start to close close that gap. Um, and again, focusing on the equity of it. How do we ensure that we are creating? a future workforce that is representative of the future, not only of our city, but of our country, um, whose values are committed to being uh, loyal and, and, and protective of our country and to serve, right? Girl Scouts is here to make the world a better place. And doing that through technology and cybersecurity in an equitable and inclusive way. And I know that there's a, a program coming up and a conversation coming up about um, uh, about inclusivity and abilities within technology. And this is another area, again, where we have a program called Girl Scouting for All. And it's an initiative that started in our organization by volunteers who had a daughter who had disabilities. And this family and community ensured that Girl Scouting programming was adapted and uh, able to be accessed accessed by every girl, no matter what her ability was. And this past year, we've created a scalable model um, where we have rolled it out throughout the, the city, and we will keep our promise of inclusivity. And again, looking at what does technology do in that, in that aspect, it creates, it creates an entirely new and equitable world that has not, has not been in the past. So we are looking at in New York City public schools right now, 50% of attendees in the New York City public school system uh, are girls, yet they only make up one third of those receiving special needs services uh, and, and specialized classes. And this is not because there are less girls in need of the services. It's an example of gender inequity that exists even within the public school system. So for some, Girl Scouts may be the only place for these girls in need of special services where they can receive adaptive programming, technology that's been designed for them and with them, and provide career opportunities uh, and open up an entire entire new career path for, for girls. Um, you know, the, the space that we talk about uh, of creating safe spaces for girls online, in person, uh, mentally and physically, we are committed to continually creating space, think space to provide areas. We know that space in New York City, physical space is so hard to come across. Um, we only own one property uh, as, a, as a Girl Scout Council, which is a 425 acre camp uh, in Dutchess County. And it is an incredible oasis. And we have made the decision, ambitious as it is, to move forward with building a $9 million facility called Girl HQ. And this will be the home of STEM classrooms, uh, cybersecurity rooms, uh, leadership rooms, so that we can ensure that every girl has an opportunity and a space uh, to immerse, them, immerse themselves into the full programming that we have to offer. Uh, so stay tuned for more, for more on that. Um, I do absolutely want to invite you to think about how you can support this next generation of young women and how you can support equity and diversity within the industry now, whether it's through interns, and I, we mentioned that in the last, in the last segment, um, through speaking at guest panels, uh, girls need to see themselves in those positions uh, they do need to be welcomed and uh, feel like they belong in this sector and in this career. And I will say it is organizations like SheTech and all of you who are here who we all have to lift 
every boat um, as we move through this to ensure that the future is equitable. Um, and I am happy to, to answer questions and to, to tell you more about how you too can move along at the speed of the girl, but also feel as inspired and optimistic as I do about the future of women and technology uh, and that we are in very good hands uh, in, in, in the future for leadership positions for women in this, in this career. Um, I don't know if I have to go back and see if there are, look, there are good, there are questions. Elaine, do you want me to go through some of the questions? Sure, that would be great. All right. Oh, look at, and uh, welcome Jen Moskal. So excited. My, one of, one of my tech people, she's put a link into some of the programs. Um, I've got lots of good Girl Scout cookie flavors. Uh, how are you partnering with higher ed and organizations like She Tech in these programs? Very good question. So first, we uh, we partner um, through our leadership institute in a number of ways with with higher ed. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the New York City public school system, it is an incredibly challenging uh, process for high school applications. Uh, as a as, again, as a mom of five. Uh, I consider myself pretty adept at navigating through processes and systems, but uh, New York City Public School does not make it easy for youth to be able to be exposed to the process. Uh, and to navigate through it with success. Our Leadership Institute starts at sixth grade so we can prepare girls for all of the options that exist within the public school system uh, to introduce them to specialty high schools, et cetera. And then we take them all the way through to the college process if college is an option. We understand too that in technology right now, it is moving so fast and the jobs that are needed to be filled are being are, are opening so quickly that there may not be college options for some of our girls, but still we need to create that equitable space and entryway for those jobs. So we do have in our leadership institute um, a, a certification program for cybersecurity so girls can get into the workforce faster. And then we partner with schools uh, like Barnard, as St. Joe's, um, uh, Cornell Tech, Etc. to make sure that girls, again, go physically into those spaces and campuses and see themselves there and see that they have a future within the higher ed industry. And of course, we always welcome and are excited about programs like working with SheTech, um, and I'm sure with many of you who are on here who can reach out for more information on that. Very Thank good. Thank you <laughs> so much, Meredith. That was great. And all those stats at the beginning about uh, famous women, successful women that started as Girl Scouts. That's, that's very interesting information to know. So thank you. 